Hey, what's up everybody? It's Mr. Pratt here, and this is the Wheel of Fortnite. So as you know, I'm always bringing you accessible, modifiable, and engaging content for in the gym, at home, and in the classroom. Today we're going to be featuring one of my awesome resources called the Wheel of Fortnite, and we're going to get into it right now. So the premise of the Wheel of Fortnite is super simple. Pick your favorite 12 Fortnite dances, or better yet, have your students pick theirs, put them on a wheel, spin the wheel, and learn one or two every class, and you'll be well on your way to knowing all the dances from every season of Fortnite. Aside from that, this requires no setup, no pre-teaching, and in fact, a lot of your students are going to get chances to be leaders because they'll know the dances and emotes better than you do. As far as rules go for this activity, there aren't really many. Uh, my one personal rule is just make it your own. A lot of these emotes are very complex dances. Some of them are quite simple, but many are all very difficult to attain, especially at an elementary school level and for a phys ed teacher like myself. So just make it your own. I try and simplify it, bring some fun into the class, and don't worry too much about the perfect technique. Now, if you're a Fortnite purist or a dance purist, I apologize for this, but this, in my mind, is what makes us accessible for all students and all people to have some fun. So for the purposes of today's video, I've picked 12 of my favorite Fortnite dances to showcase for you today. I'm going to break them down into simple steps for you to teach to your students in the class. But a quick disclaimer before we get started, I'm a terrible dancer, but I like to have fun, and I'm not a Fortnite expert, so please keep your judgments generous. And boom, just like that, we're into the Wheel of Fortnite, starting with the crowd favorite, the Floss. So if you've never learned the Floss before, here's a simple way to break it down. Start with the legs and just have your students shake their hips from side to side, going right to left, back and forth. Then we're going to add in the hands. Your hands got to be in a fist, and they're in front of you, and you're simply going in, out, switch. In, out, switch. When you combine those two segments together, it's going to look something like this. Hip out, hands in, hands go out, hands switch, hands come in, hip goes out, hands go out, hands switch. And then you're going to repeat. Now when it goes fast, it's hard to follow, but if you break it down into those simple steps, you should be well on your way to doing the floss. Time for some disco fever now. So the disco fever can be broken down into three simple steps. Step number one, you're gonna have students rock their fingers to both sides while they're tapping their foot. All right. Then you're gonna have them go across for another four counts, pointing across, and then it's simply the classic disco moves. You're going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Helps if you do it in eight counts, and it breaks it down just like this with those three simple steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the disco fever. Next up is the robot. That's the only part I can do, so we're skipping that one. And next up we got the flapper, another great one for a little bit of dance history. This dates back to the 1920s, doing a dance called the Charleston, and it gives a little bit of music history while you're learning a pop culture dance. So here we go with the flapper. Again, we're going to break it down into two parts. Let's start with the easiest part, the arms. Your hands are going to be out like this, and you're simply just moving them from side to side back and forth, okay? So have students practice that first, and if you want to get their feet a little light, they can just be moving their feet up and down to start. Next, you got the legs. You're gonna step in front, then behind, and then behind, and in front. In front, behind, behind, in front. And you're just gonna repeat that pattern. When you put it together, it's gonna look like this. My hands are going side to side, my feet are going front to back. Just like this.
Next up, we got best mates. One of my favorites because it's super simple. Let's start with the arms. My arms are gonna go up beside me like this and my elbows are gonna face down. My hands are simple. They're just going back and forth and my knees are just gonna move like high knees so my legs are coming up just like this the whole time. When we put the arms and legs together, it's gonna look like this. Key one with that one is as a knee goes up, the hand goes out. Knee goes up, hand goes out. Next up is a squat kick. That ain't happening. Next, please. Next up, we got reanimated. Thanks for this one, Michael Jackson. So for reanimated, we're gonna go a little T-Rex arms, I call them, to the side. T-Rex arms to the side again. And then we're gonna pretend we're being electrocuted. Just like that. That's the first half. So we're going side, side, electrocute. All right, that's step one. Step two, you're gonna kind of creep forward again. I like to call them little T-Rex arms. So you're going forward, forward, kind of looking creepy. And then you're going up and just powering down. So again, your side, side, electrocute. You're doing the little creeper. You're going up, you're powering down. All right, next up we got the running man, and then we're moving on to some dance moves, which is also known as the default dance or default emote. Now, I modify these ones because I can't really do these ones either. Not like that stopped me from the last couple, but let's give it a shot. For running man, you're simply gonna have students have one foot forward, one foot behind. I prefer to do it this way, and they're just rocking back and forth. This is gonna be how they're gonna move their legs, okay? Now with their hands, Usually start with the fist, you pull down in front of your face, just like this. And then there's a whole bunch of different little hand moves and hand pumps and hand signals going on in there. I don't know, I just simplify it personally. So I'm going back and forth, I pull my hands down. Some kids have told me they do it twice, I don't know. And I pull down, and I'm going, I'm pumping, maybe doing a little bit of this, and I'm back. Okay, a little bit of running man. That's how I do it anyway. Next up you got dance moves. Dance moves is another one that's above my pay grade, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Simply start with a clap, do a swag or you walk. Every three steps, add in a clap. Maybe pump the face, pump down. You're gonna end with a point, cross the arms. To simplify for my students, I just do the clap, the three steps. Clap, pull down, point, and the arm cross. There's a lot more arm action in there. I just take it out to keep it simple. All right, next up we got boneless. Another favorite of the elementary school students. If you ever see a kid flopping around like you and you have no idea what they're doing, they're probably doing boneless. Super simple. You're gonna bend the knees, you're gonna move the feet up and down just like this, and you're gonna flop your arms around like you don't got any bones in your arms. The kids seem to like to lean back and add in some more movements like this, but just make it your own, okay? That's boneless. Sweet, short, simple. Step It Up's one that's again above my pay grade, but it's some kind of highland dance. They're doing lots of tapping, lots of stuff with the footwork, quick feet. Probably would be a great one to look into further for a more complex dance than just a warm-up dance. And last but not least, we gotta savor that W. Again, some fancy footwork in this one, but I simplified for my students. They're gonna make a little W with their hands, and they're gonna be moving their feet back and forth. Okay, just back and forth like this, kind of on their toes and heels, alternating. Okay, I think when they do it, their feet actually go the opposite directions, which I can't quite figure out, personally, but, you get the gist of it. And boom, just like that, we've went full circle around our wheel of Fortnite. Now, it's important that you know why I use this in my class. So first off, the setup simple. With a little wheel, you can have lots of fun and lots of engagement for your students. This is something that connects to pop culture and is really gonna get a lot of students who aren't too into dance really engaged. It's also a great way to warm up their body, as lots of these dances or emotes actually have some functional fitness in them, like high knees, fast feet, and pumping those arms while you're pumping those legs. So they're a great way to get the body ready for activity. 
Now one of the reasons you should use the Wheel of Fortnite is because it actually connects a lot of dance history into your class. So believe it or not, Fortnite didn't originate most of these dances, or emotes as they're often called in the game. Most of these were taken from pop culture from past decades, maybe even past centuries. So I think that's a cool way to tie in pop culture, how times change, and how things become popular again, and give students a little preview of some history of dance. Dances that Fortnite has taken from pop culture that I enjoy include The Fresh, which is taken from a character named Carlton on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and my personal favorite is The Groove Jam, which is taken from Napoleon Dynamite's character in the movie Napoleon Dynamite. Other dances that are a little bit more historically relevant would be dances like The Flapper, Disco Fever, and The Robot. These were all popular dances a couple decades ago, and I think it's cool for kids to know what their parents used to groove to. And one last thing to consider before you tune out. Doing this wheel is a great way to give students some ownership over their own learning. You can modify this in whatever way you want. You could do it season by season in Fortnite and you're gonna have students telling you all about the different dances from all the seasons of Fortnite. They're gonna be super excited to share their knowledge with you. And it's a great way for them to take a leadership role. You could also have each individual student create their own wheel, working in small groups, trying to teach each other dances or learn new dances together. Again, it's just a great way to get more students involved, taking a little bit of leadership and ownership and responsibility for their own learning and their own activity. Whether you're a Fortnite player or supporter or not really is irrelevant. These dances and emotes are very popular with young people these days and even people who don't play Fortnite often know them. It's a great way to get kids engaged and connected in class in a whole new way and it's really going to bring out some of those students who are hesitant to dance and really get them involved in the class. So let's save the politics for another day and just have some fun dancing because that's what it's all about. So that about does it for the Wheel of Fortnite. Thanks for checking out another one of my videos. Please remember to hit that subscribe button down there, sign up for weekly notifications, like, and share away. As always, feel free to leave me a comment below. As you know, I love hearing about the dances you've done with your students or hearing about all your personal favorites and new dances that you'd like me to feature in next videos. But for now, this is Mr. Pratt signing off from the Wheel of Fortnite.